Today's video is about filming in Blackmagic RAW and editing in DaVinci Resolve. I never used either of them until this project, but as you can see from the finished timeline, this job is done. It wasn't that difficult or time consuming. So if you're interested in how I filmed and edited this 60 second short for my friend's Airbnb, then stick around and I'll take you through my creative process. Now this 60 second video features exteriors and interiors of my friend's Airbnb. And as such, it's a really worthwhile test of all this tech. As a professional filmmaker, I gotta learn how it all works before I can use it on paid jobs. Which brings me to the setup. Besides filming in RAW, three things are really gonna lift the production value of this piece. And that is a gimbal, a slider, and a wide angle lens. To get the best possible footage, I shot this project at 4K resolution at 50 frames a second. This would give me ample opportunity to slow down the footage by 50% and also reframe because I would be delivering this at 1080 full HD at 25 frames a second. As far as the codec goes, I'm shooting in RAW. I left it at the lowest quality setting, which is 12 to 1, because believe it or not, even 12 to 1 is still fantastic quality so no need to uh, change that at all and recorded the clips off to an external Samsung T5 SSD drive just plug in the same drive into my computer and start editing as for setting up the gimbal the Jun Crane 2 is solid when you've got batteries that are charged up, you can run it all day, no worries. The Blackmagic camera is a bit more thirsty when it comes to juice. Uh, that went through, in the hour of recording, went through two batteries. I've noticed that 4K video does really increase its demand. No audio, I just left the internal mics on, so no microphone mounted on it. And as far as uh, focusing goes, no follow focus, just there's only a single point that I wanted in focus per shot and as such I could just tap to focus on the 5 inch screen on the back of the Blackmagic pocket camera. As I knew there would be some exterior shots I did plan ahead and check the weather forecast to make sure it was sunny. It's not always like this in England. Talking of the sun, my primary lens on this job was the Lumix 7-14 which is a nice wide angled lens however there's no filter thread on it. So unlike my other lenses, I couldn't add a very ND and stop down and control my depth of field. Let's skip past the shoot phase just for a moment and dive straight into the nuts and bolts of editing in DaVinci Resolve. We'll return to my shot decisions and edit decisions in a bit. Anyway, let's get into this. The first page is the project manager. So either create a new project or open an existing one. If this is a new project, import some media and create a timeline. I'm going to deliver at 1080.25 because I want to use those extra frames per second for a bit of slow-mo. So my timeline needs to be 1080.25. So double click a file, set in and out points with the I and O keys. This is all standard stuff for multi-track editing. And if you've used Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere Pro before, you can change the keyboard shortcuts to whichever app you know best. My favorite way to build a timeline in projects like this is to add the music and then drag the prepped clips into the timeline. In this edit, I've used retiming to get some slow motion. It's easy to do. Select a clip and press Command R and click the clip to adjust. If any of your clips have a slight wobble, make sure they're selected, go to the inspector and click stabilization. Once the edit is complete, you can jump to the color page. However, if you're not ready to get into that, and believe me, DaVinci has the very best color tools, you may just want to try out the auto color feature. It's really pretty good. So editing aside, the biggie for most people is the scary prospect of the color page. Now, unlike something like Final Cut Pro, which uses a stack of effects, DaVinci Resolve uses a node-based system, which just looks a bit different. Here, it's like a chain of effects and alterations. 
First off, as you filmed in Blackmagic RAW, you can hop straight to the Color tab. In there, you'll see a camera icon. If you click on that, you'll get some options for changing the ISO and white balance. This can be particularly useful as a primary adjustment to your footage prior to adding any color correction. It's easy to forget about white balance if you're going from indoors to outdoors, etc. Most of my shots only require some basic color correction. As such, I just go into this section, which is the, the primary windows, and affect the shadows on the left and the midtones in the middle and the highlights on the right, which DaVinci Resolve terms the lift, gamma, and gain. Here, I'm just using the horizontal wheel below each in order to affect each clip in the project. To copy an adjustment to another clip, select a clip, the border will go bright red, and then command click additional clips which you wish to copy this color correction to. Right click on your mouse and choose apply grade. If you want to apply a color correction or grade to a number of clips, then it's possible to do this another way by adding an adjustment filter in the edit page. Select adjustment clip, drag it down to the timeline above the clips you want to affect. Then hop back to the color page, make the color correction whilst the adjustment clip is selected and that will affect every clip that is below your adjustment clip. For a simple fast turnaround project like this, that should be all you'll need. However, if you need a little more support and go further with your color correction and grading, please check out the links in the notes below. To finish off my edit, I'm just going to drag and drop a simple title as a call to action at the end. Next, it's time to jump straight to the export page. And for me, I like a custom H.264 file to share online. Choose a name and a location, adjust the settings, add to the render queue and click start render. OK, enough teasing. Let's look at the finished film and then I'll run through my filming and editing choices that might give you some ideas for your next project. As the location is pretty and compact, I needed to establish it with as wide a shot as possible, so film from both the top of the garden and from the opposite side of the road, as far away in the other direction, giving us a chance to look at the property and its location from two points of action. Knowing what I do about Airbnb, most people are keen to ascertain the bedroom and the bathroom are top notch, so as such, I'd use that to be the high point of my film a point to build to. Setting up the scene, I noticed the heart ornament in the window framing the outdoor table and chairs, a place where all Airbnbers dream of, a romantic nook. Using the slider, the parallax effect adds some interest and depth to the shot. I also had a feeling that this tour around the property should be bookended by this romantic symbol, so slid the camera up and down the slider to give me this option in the edit. There are a few slider shots in here, Obviously, I got critical focus first and then slid in to reveal the subject. Eyes are greedy, so I do like to reveal elements in a shot to build the story and direct the viewer. Picking up the archway from the establishing shot moves us closer to the meat of the video, the interior. 
Popping the camera on the Crane 2 gimbal, I used the railings on the patio to add a foreground element to create depth and interest to the shot. Rather than go straight inside, I switched to the front of the house to build up tension before the reveal. Again, before entering the house, I couldn't help but get in some of those nice lens flares which bring about this panning motif. The next two shots follow this motif with an extended shot of the bedroom into the bathroom as the music climaxes. These are all wide shots as we familiarise ourselves with the location. Having seen the bed a few times, it's time to frame up a little closer, getting a sense of the bed fabric and the makeup mirror. Covering off the kitchenette breakfast table with a move in towards the large mirror has a little bit of depth and interest with the leading lines of the countertop and reflection in the mirror. The next two shots are harmonious, the symmetry making the place feel homely and settling. Moving outdoors, the edits follow the music, allowing me to jump cut back up to the patio for a finale in this romantic setting. If you like the music I've used in this video, then do check out artlist.io. It's a great service, which I've been a subscriber for for over a year. It's had a lot of value to my productions and I recommend them. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned a thing or two about DaVinci Resolve. Having completed my first project, I've now got a bit more confidence and I can't wait to get back into Resolve and learn something new. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and do leave a comment down below. Until next time, I'm Adam Loretz. Bye for now.